Today I'm sharing what I eat in a day on a high fat carnivore diet. I'm just using three ingredients, beef, eggs, and butter. Today I'll be making an egg in a hole for breakfast. Then I'll be doing a carnivore quiche, making some brown butter bites, and of course, having a fatty latte. Let's just get into it. Let's see what we have in the fridge. It's pretty empty. Now my partner does have some low sugar yogurt every single day. We also have chicken, but unfortunately I don't eat chicken. So when your fridge is bare, there's no meat or eggs or butter, it's time to go grocery shopping. So I'm very fortunate. We have our grocery store just downstairs in the mall. And this was really funny. My partner was actually filming me while he was filming me, he actually bumped into a pole. So just check this out. What? What did you do? I hit that thing. <laughs> While you were filming? During our grocery shop, we just did the usual beef, butter and eggs, but we got busted for filming. I don't know what it is. We can't film in public. Okay, so that is about 32 US dollars. That's so cheap. I got a whole tray of butter, eggs, one kilo of ground beef, and I got some sparkling water for my little gift. So you can see doing this kind of diet is not expensive. It's super cheap. So let me go buy a pie crust for the carnival quiche. This was my very first time making a carnival quiche in a pie crust mold. So we are here just trying to find what is the right size for the pie crust mold. It was about 26 centimeters. So I'm hoping it's the right size just to make sure it's enough for the 10 eggs and the one pound of ground beef. So I've got my pie crust that I'm going to use to make the carnival quiche. I was always making it in a baking dish, but I want to try this for something different. We have everything for what I eat in a day, beef, butter and eggs. And as you can see here, I've dropped my receipt. For some reason, I am very clumsy when I am filming. I promise you, I'm not that clumsy in real life. But let me just show you what we bought. I have some 80-20 ground beef here. Now, this is really good because it's a one to one protein to fat ratio. Really good if you want to do a high fat carnivore diet. I then have some eggs, such a staple. You want to make sure that you eat the yolks. If you have an allergy to egg whites, you can take those away. Now this is a star, all of this butter. When it comes to butter, I probably have around about half of this. This is about 250 grams of butter or about two sticks. So I'll probably have half of this every day. Now in terms of how much this cost, this is about 32 US dollars. So this is gonna last me for a couple of days. So you can see using these staple ingredients on your high fat carnival diet is super, super cheap. Okay, the first thing I wanna do is to do a fatty latte. I've showed this so many times, but I do wanna show you how much butter I have because especially if you're doing a high fat carnival diet, I do it by increasing my butter content. So I do measure it. Uh, so this is something that you can do. Let me just quickly open this up. This is what I do every day. I measure things. You might not wanna measure things and you might want to eyeball it. So I get the mug, put it on the scale. Now, if you wanna eyeball it, I would say it's about this much butter, I'm guessing. But I'll just measure it just to make sure. Oh, that's about, that's about, that, that's okay. That's close to an ounce. I'm gonna have that in my fatty latte. The next thing is my coffee. Now, one thing I've done is to not have any takeaway coffee because coffee is so expensive. What I have here is Nespresso. So I just go for one flavor that I like. Today, I'm gonna choose the caramel creme brulee. And then we're going to make the coffee. Now this is so easy. All you do is turn on the coffee machine, pop in the mug, and then let your hot water run. I do have a pro tip. Let your hot water melt the butter before frothing it with a whizzer. This is my pro tip to have the most delicious fatty latte every day. I was also having two of these, but I cut it back to one because I am doing a one coffee a day challenge on my Instagram. But look at that, delicious. This is the perfect way to start every single morning. Oh my God, it's like heaven. 
So I've got a large pan here and I've measured out about three ounces of ground beef. So what I'm gonna do now is to make them into little beef donuts. Uh, the way that I do this is, okay, I can either roll it like this and then put it into a ring. I think, oh crap, that doesn't work. Uh, <gasps> I think I might do burger patties and make a hole in the middle. So as you can see, it is so much easier just to use this little burger patty device. All you do is get three and a half ounces or 100 grams of 80-20 ground beef. As you can see, I'm just smooshing it down, making sure that the surface is nice and even, and that's gonna create really, really good burger patties. Then all I do is grab the lid, give it a nice press all around, just to make sure that it's nice and uniform, pressing it around, and look at that. How perfect is that burger patty? There is no fuss, there is no stickiness to the actual burger patty device. And then all I do is pop it on a plate, use my finger then to mold a beef burger patty donut. Now the art is to put it on the pan without breaking. But I'm gonna use an egg flipper. Is it called an egg flipper? This thing. Where is it? This one. Is that an egg? That's an egg flipper. Yes, I'm gonna use this one. And carefully, carefully put it on the pan. So with your large pan, I'm probably gonna put it onto medium high heat. Let's just wait for that to come to temperature. But I'm gonna add some butter so we can fry it. It'll be about this much. Pop that in. Usually I would do an egg in a hole with a whole egg, but I do want to try it just with egg yolks because I think that's going to be very delicious. So I need to separate my eggs. Let me just do that. I would suggest that with the eggs, make sure that they're room temperature. That's going to make sure it's easier to cook. And I think it separates the egg yolks and the whites better. Get two bowls, one for the egg yolks. and then one for the whites. What? This is a real chicken. <laughs> oh my God, I've never had, I've, I literally, I've never seen that in my whole life. The, is that like an actual feather of a chicken? I feel a bit grossed out, but like, what the hell? <laughs> I've now separated three egg yolks from the whites. You can use the whites or you can just completely discard them. Now it's time to fry up the beef donut. So I'm doing that one at a time, just using the egg flipper, just to make sure that each of the beef donuts don't break. That's the last thing that you want with this egg in a hole. The beef donut patties have now been cooking on one side for about five minutes. And now it's time to give them a bit of a flip -a -roo. Just make sure that they don't break when you're flipping them. <laughs> And now they're cooking on that one side for five minutes. I'm just gonna flip them again and look at that golden brown color. It looks so delicious. Now it's time to add in the egg yolks. With the egg yolks, I'm really careful. The last thing that you want is to break each yolk. So I just use my finger just to allow the egg yolk to slowly come onto the burger patty. Look at that. It is perfect, no breakage, no fuss. Okay, I got all of their three eggs right and none of the yolks cracked, so yay for me. So this is the final egg in the hole. So I did make this before with a whole egg, but I did find that when I cracked the whole egg, that it was just going everywhere. So as you can see here, this one is not perfect, but you can see here, these are beautiful and you can see it just sits there nicely. The egg yolk is not completely cooked, but that's what you want. That's where you get all of the nutrients when the egg yolk is not completely cooked. So I'm also gonna have this with some butter on the side and I'm gonna give it a taste test. So I'm just breaking up the yolk and look at that. It is so delicious and runny. Sometimes you can just use an egg yolk and some butter to create a hollandaise sauce. It is so much better than just having plain old meat. It is so good for some variation to your carnivore diet and it holds so well. You can even make a hollandaise sauce ahead of time and have it on hand. Now I'm just giving it a taste test and it is, as I always say, it is super delicious. 
Now it's always important to get in a little bit of movement every single day. And that's exactly what I'm doing right about now. Let's go do a quick workout. Now we are really fortunate that we have a gym just downstairs from where we live. And I like to focus on progress, not perfection. Any movement counts. So I love to focus on yoga moves. As you can see here, I am doing a cat cow stretch followed by a child's pose position. This is really good for stretching your back and stretching your whole body. I also love to do other variations of yoga poses like downward facing dog. I like to do warrior poses. I like to stretch out my hip flexors. This is really important, especially as we age to get increased mobility and flexibility. Sometimes we just focus on doing weight training workouts, which is great for strength, but also having the opposing side, which is flexibility and mobility for overall health. So that was a 15 minute yoga stretch. I'm just gonna go do some interval training now. For my interval training, I'll either use a treadmill or I'll use a cross trainer. And I simply just do 30 seconds walking and then 30 seconds running just for five minutes. It doesn't have to be that intense, but it can give you a good sweat and a good workout to get your heart rate increasing. So try that every day. Yes. That's the good thing about a short workout. It doesn't make you tired, it makes you more energized. Especially doing yoga, interval training. I don't feel tired at all. I used to feel exhausted when I was doing like hour, hour and a half workout. But with this one, I don't. After my workout is done, I just had a quick shower. I feel nice and fresh. I just did some simple makeup and was brushing my hair just to get ready for the day. Okay, let's get some work done. These days I have been super busy creating new courses, including this one, which is the 30 day fat loss masterclass. It's using a carnival diet to help you lose stubborn body fat and also gain lean muscle. There are over 60 lessons over four weeks. We have meal plans every single week, featured recipes all available at fiveminutebody.com and you can get 20% off as an early discount. And I also work with my partner, Arash. He is a CTO basically on 5 Minute Body. He just helps me with all the tech stuff because I'm really not good at that. Okay, I'm kind of hungry now. I wanna go make the carnival quiche. Mm -hmm. To make the carnival quiche, it is a really simple recipe. I'm also adding some parsley because my partner does like some greenery in it and some variation. I just have 10 eggs that I just crack in a bowl. I'm also preheating my oven to 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Also adding in some good quality salt. You know, I love my Redmond's real salt. Then I'm just going to give it a whisk. And then it's now onto the ground beef. I'm using 80, 20 ground beef, and there is about three quarters of a pound here, or about 300 grams that I'm just going to cook. And I'm also going to add some seasoning to the ground beef. You don't have to be worried about seasoning and herbs. I'm not a perfect carnivore. So I add seasoning, I add herbs. We're also adding in some parsley as well to the quiche. So this one just has some, I think it's like cumin, paprika, uh, turmeric, red pepper flakes. It just gives a lot of uh, flavor to the ground beef. So I'm gonna add a little bit of that in, probably about that much. So after cooking the ground beef for a bit, I realized I should probably add a little bit more seasoning. So I just added a bit more. I think the seasoning does help for extra flavor. And I know if you're on carnivore, you might be worried about the extra seasoning or spices or herbs but just don't be worried about it because it does keep you consistent on a carnival lifestyle. I just then cooked it for about five to 10 minutes and now I'm just taking it off the heat. The ground beef is done. Now I'm just gonna wait for that to cool before I put it in the egg because I feel like if that's too hot and I put it in the egg, it's gonna cook the egg. So I'm waiting for that, but we're also gonna make some brown butter bites because let me just show you what I have. I always keep it in the freezer. Let me show you these gems, oh, sorry. Okay, I always have these on hand. I'm gonna have this fat bomb after having the carnival quiche, but I need to make more because I'm running them, running out of these. I'm gonna show you how to make that as well. 
after I get the carnival quiche together. So look at that. So good. I'm so tempted to have one now, but I'm gonna wait for my meal. So. After the ground beef has nicely cooled down, I'm just adding it to the egg mixture. Now you might be wondering if I cooked the ground beef in any fat, and the answer is no, because the ground beef obviously has a lot of fat in it, as you can see from the pan. So I didn't feel the need to add any extra butter or tallow. I just gave it a mix and then transferred it to this pie crust mold. And then I'm gonna pop it into the oven. Oh, before that, sorry, I added, obviously, I added in the parsley. You can add as much or as little as you want. I really wanted that nice green color, so I just added a whole lot in, gave it a little bit of a mush around just to make sure the parsley is nicely incorporated into the carnival quiche. And then I noticed there was some bits where there was no parsley, so I just added in more of the parsley. Get this one. Oh my god. Ouch. Put it in. Hey Google, put the timer on for 30 minutes. Let's start the brown butter bites. To get started on the brown butter bites, I have 112 grams of butter or one stick. The butter is unsalted. You can use any brand that you want. So I just pop it in a pan. The pan is on medium-ish heat and you just wanna melt it all around the pan. It might be also easier if you wanna cut it up into little bits and that's going to help it just melt a little bit faster. I'm also adding in some cinnamon for some extra flavor. You can do different things. Um, you can add some bacon, you can add some ground beef. There's so many different ways to make your brown butter bites extra delicious. This has been about a few minutes just melting the butter on the fry pan and you can see those little bubbles and that's how I know that it's starting to kind of caramelize and get really nice and nutty flavor. I just added in some cinnamon to the brown butter bites. If you want me to show you an A to Z recipe of how to make the brown butter bites, just let me know in the comments. It's, it's really simple but there are a few little things that you need to know just to make sure that the butter doesn't overcook and then you get a burnt mess. See like when it gets to, uh, there's like this white stuff on top, I think that's kind of when it's like nearly done. I think I can smell the nuttiness. So, uh, and I don't really like to take it all the way. See it's getting like brown, see here? That means it's nearly done. Yeah, I think I wanna like take it off now. So right about now, I know that the brown butter bites are probably done. You can see me pointing at the bottom of the pan because there's some brown specks that are forming and they are so delicious. That's what you want in your brown butter bites. So I'm taking it off the heat now and transferring it to some little cute molds. You can choose any shape that you want. I like these little heart shapes. Once I actually freeze them and eat them, they are about a teaspoon, so I know how much fat I'm eating. I am using a little jar just to transfer it, just to make sure there's no mess. And look at that, doesn't it look great? Okay, I'm putting it in the fridge first to chill and then in the freezer. I have no room in the fridge. Here. Now that the brown butter bites are done and in the fridge, it's time to get back to the carnival quiche. Now that was in the oven for about 30 minutes, so I'm just taking it out very carefully. And you can see, I am surprised how good the carnival quiche looks. It's going to kind of puff up and once you take it out, it's going to deflate uh, slightly. But look at that. Doesn't that look like a professional quiche? It doesn't even look like it's carnival based. So I really think that you should give it a try. Looks fantastic. I'm surprised. <laughs> okay. This is what my pie crust, not pie crust. <laughs> this is what the carnival quiche is looking like. And as you can see, can you see this room on the end? I love that shape. So I wanna give it a taste test. And, oh, by the way, I'm also having the brown butter bites. I'm just having three of them. So I'm gonna give it a taste. Some people say in the comments that I always say that my recipes are 
delicious because they are. But if you want to see how they are, maybe just give it a try and let me know in the comments. So let me just try. Mmm, it's really good. Now the other thing to make this even more delicious is that you can add some heavy cream. But if your goal is fat loss, I would not have any dairy. I did make this last year with the ground beef and the eggs and I added heavy cream, but I ate the whole carnival quiche in one day because for me, dairy is very, very addictive. So I'm gonna eat this, I'm gonna have my brown butter bites and I wanna thank you for joining me on what I eat in a day. If you want more videos like this, make sure that you subscribe. But just a few tips, make sure that for each meal, add the right amount of fat that is right for you. For me, I would add about one to two tablespoons per meal. Right now I'm having about two meals per day and that is what works for me. I also have one fatty latte in the morning. So if you need help with your fat loss goals, if you can't lose weight, no matter what you do on a high fat carnival diet or a carnival diet, I would love to help you with our fat loss masterclass. But I hope you enjoyed the What I Eat In A Day and I'll catch you next week. Bye.